Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to paint the background. Um, my style is going to be more realistic, so I'm going to show you how to use a photograph and um, be able to match the colors and make it as realistic as possible. I'm not going for hyper-realism, uh, just realistic. Uh, let's go over what I'm using for my canvas. This is a 11 by 14. It is a watercolor canvas. Um, I have pre-stained it with some raw sienna and burnt umber. And what I did was just water that down really well, um, covered the canvas, and then took a paper towel and just wiped the entire thing off. I then went through and did my sketch, and I used pastel pencils for that. Um, filled in some of my darker areas, just kind of got a feel of the warm and the cool tones in the photo, and added in whatever details I felt needed. Um, on the photo, there was some cows right here. Uh, I decided to use my artistic license and take that away. I just wanted the main focus to be this and the nice bright sunlight coming through. Um, and what I did after I put the pastels down, because you can see it's not rubbing off, um, I went through and sprayed it with some pastel fixative, just a light coat of that, and that helps to keep my drawing as I'm painting and don't have to worry about my arm rubbing on it. Um, uh, as far as colors, I'm using Liquitex Basics paint. Uh, right here I have bronze yellow, uh, burnt or raw sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, hooker's green, naples yellow, cadmium yellow, uh, phalo blue, light purple, uh, let's see, that's light blue violet, uh, unbleached titanium white, titanium white, and Mars black. Um, I do have a jar of water, clean water, a spray bottle. I like the Ultra Fine Mist spray. Um, that's just a master's touch one. I just like how it sprays. I continually spray my palette. Um, and then a roll of paper towels, and I have a variety of different brushes. I'm not quite sure as of yet which ones I'm actually going to use, so I'll try to show you those as I go. Uh, today we're just going to be working on the background and this foreground here, and then we will paint the cow on the next video. So let's start by, with the photo, there is a nice bright area right in here. I want to get my um, my background trees in first because that bright area actually mists over sun rays over that area. So let's get our background trees in and they're fairly dark because they contrast with the uh, with the sky really well. So let's grab a let's try this one. This one is the number 10 round. And that's just a fine touch brush. I'm gonna dab it in some water. And let's, and I have my photo sitting right next to me over here. And what that does is it allows me to mix my paint onto my palette and then pick an area on my picture that I can go ahead and test to see if that color is going to match. So there is a tree that goes right about in here. Um, I wanna go ahead and get that one in. So let's mix up some dark green. I'm going to take some hooker's green, a little bit of the raw umber, and then we'll take some Mars black, just a little bit of that, deepen that, add some more green to that. There's not a lot of green. Um, it's not a really close tree, so your colors tend to be more on the blue side. So I'm actually gonna add just a little bit of phalo blue. Phalo blue is a very potent color, so you just need a little bit of that. And what that does is it kind of makes it, um, gives it the um, atmospheric effect. So I'm gonna test that on my paper. And that's actually a little too dark, so I'm going to add some titanium white to that. I'm going to 
grab some raw umber and just dull that color down just a little bit. More raw umber. that will work so it looks like right about in this area is where the trunk comes down so I'm just going to gently sketch that in and I'm just going right over my pastel lines that I have and you can do this in graphite you can do your sketch in graphite um, it does cause a little bit more of an issue when you use graphite. Um, you would need, you would want to spray it definitely with some kind of fixative first. Otherwise, the graphite tends to want to bleed into um, wants to bleed into the paint that you're putting down. And sometimes, if you're using light layers with graphite, it will. It'll want to, it somehow sneaks through and you can always see the graphite. So I switched to pastel pencils. I used to use the graphite pencil to do all my sketches in and it gave me too much trouble. So I'm just doing some sporadic little leaf shapes here. Nothing uniform. This is a nature scene in the background. So nothing in nature is uniform. And I'm paying attention to my reference photo, always checking to see where the dark areas are, where this color might be. There's not a lot of paint on my brush. <clears throat> and that helps give it this nice um, translucent effect too in some of the areas. I can grab some more water. There are a few branches that stick out so I want to make sure I get those in and I'm just using the tip of my brush just a really light touch to that Now this ear right here actually went a little bit over there and that's okay we'll cover that up but this ear right here is being backlit by the sun over here and it's a really bright area so I want to make sure I get this nice and dark because that will give it the contrast that it needs the extra pop. Okay so now we can take some of our raw sienna and add it into that color on some of the areas that are highlighted. It almost has a little bit of a halo effect. I'm gonna take some unbleached titanium white. And let's put more gold in there. Add a 
Put some Naples yellow to that. I'm not going to worry too much about the detail right now because we are going to put the back mountain or hill area that's back here in. I just don't want to lose my sketch on this tree. So I'm just going to add in just a little bit of this color. And we'll do even more Naples yellow as we come towards the top here. And we're not trying to replicate this image exactly. You certainly can um, make it more of a hyper-realistic scene. I just, I really don't have the patience for it. It takes a lot of patience. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush off now. And let's work on the area back in here. And it looks like I actually didn't draw that in. So let me kind of sketch that out just a little bit. I just had, I just rinsed off my brush and I have a small, small amount of color on there. And this is just going to let me, allow me to be able to sketch this out without committing. right up underneath here okay so let's take this area is really sunlit right here so what I'm going to do is actually take this color that we used for the highlight and just draw it in I'm going to start with the lighter areas first And I'm not doing a straight line. I'm kind of making some really um, sporadic tree shapes in there. Bring that down just a little bit. Okay, now we can go into some of the dark color, some hooker's green, phthalo blue, raw umber, some black, a little bit of titanium white. a really nice dark color so here is the hill and then we have another small hill here some rolling hills in the back it looks like I'm just sketching this out right now and then we can fill this in with some of our dark color some more water to my brush and then we can just kind of start to blend that upward this area in here is nice and dark Now, as, as we go back 
in this area here, I'm going to add some more phthalo blue to that. And even lighten it just a little bit to create a mistier effect. I'm not going to worry about covering any of this tree up because we're going to go back through and put some of the highlight on there again just to brighten it up. And this color will come down and add even a little bit more white to make it a little bit more misty as we come forward. More water. And I'm paying attention to the hill in the background, wanting to make sure I follow that shape. You go with the way of the land. So we can add a little bit of this, the lighter mixture that we mixed up. Just to change it up a little bit. I'm gonna add some unbleached titanium white to that. Just creating land textures. You can't really see it back there, but there is some variance in colors back there. So I want to make sure I get those in. And there's the top of this hill here. And then it gets darker. towards the bottom here. I'm going to start at the bottom and then just pull that color up to blend it in. And the reason I tone my canvas like I did um, is because that's the primary color that I see in the photo. And also when you see all these little itty bitty um, canvas areas that are showing through, if it was white, you would have to make certain that you cover that up completely. But because I have it toned a similar color, I don't need to worry about that too much. Some of that gives it just a little bit more depth. So I always take my photos and see what the primary color might be. And that will be my base. Okay, so we need a transition color here. Let's take, we'll just mix some of those colors together. I'm gonna add some more water. starting at the darkest area down here where I want to transition. And just varying your colors. 
it really helps to give it that extra dimension. So adding in lots of different colors, even if it's only a small area before you switch to the next color, it just, it makes all the difference. And I'm still continuing to do more tree-like shapes as I work my way up. And I'm testing it on the paper that I have. I printed it out on just regular printer paper. And testing it, and that will show me if it's too light or too dark. Okay, so it looks like we need to add in a little bit more darkness in that area. And just continue going back and forth from light to dark until you get the effect that you want. The more layers that you put on there, the more dimension it's going to give your painting. So all those colors still show through. As the paint runs off, runs out of my brush, I'm just pulling some of the, that color through the top. I'm going to grab some umber, add it to that, some phthalo blue, 
Just a nice deep dark color will work. Because this is in the background, I'm keeping more, most all of my colors a little more on the bluish tone side. So as you go farther away from the foreground, the landscape takes on more of the sky color, the atmospheric effect. This silver in this area is actually pretty blue. That is way too much blue. It's a very powerful color, so you want to make sure you don't overdo it. Water to my brush. And this is all going to be lightened up a little bit anyways because we're going to be doing the sun rays over it. So if it's a little dark at first, that will actually work to your benefit. I have quite a bit of water in my brush right now, so I'm just glazing over some of the areas of the canvas that are maybe showing through a little more than I want. Okay, let's add some cooler highlight here. We'll just retouch some of that. Uh, let's see. Let's try that one. Use your finger whenever you can to 
help blend that. Seems to be the best tool. You just gotta be quick about it. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and then I can glaze over some of this area here. So let's go ahead and lay in this gold color here. Let's grab some Naples yellow, some raw sienna. And some unbleached titanium white just on this lower part here. bright area back in here just a small sliver of light a darker area here so we're going to take some raw umber Just tapping just to add some texture. We don't want straight lines. And this color can actually come this way from the shadow of the tree. In the photo, the cows are covering that, so that's okay. I'm just going to pop in some of this color, use up what's on my brush. And then I'm gonna spray my palette. Just a mist. I usually use a Stay Wet palette and this is the paper that goes in it, and so I usually soak it and scrub it until it's almost like a paper towel-like and put that on the sponge that it comes with in the Stay Wet box palette. And for filming purposes, I figured people might want to see what I'm mixing. So for filming purposes, I'm just using the paper. But if you have a Stay Wet palette, I highly recommend it. it definitely saves on paint you can put that lid on it and it'll be ready to go the next day. I'm just working some of this color in. Just building up layer upon layer. Now that we're getting a little bit closer, I can start adding in some of this uh, burnt umber because it's got more of a reddish tone to it and those you usually want to save for the foreground.
just looking at my reference photos, seeing where the dark areas, where the shadows are in the grass, that I can put some of this color in there just to give it more dimension. Change up your colors, don't keep them all the same. And as you come closer, it's going to get darker and darker. Our darkest spots will be towards this front area here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in all of these areas that we see here with a darker color and then we can add some more highlight on top of that. So I'm taking raw umber a little bit of phthalo blue a little bit of the Mars black And 
just keep adding in color until I get the color that I'm looking for. And this is just the base. We're going to do the highlights and the other colors over the top of it, but I need some of those shadows in there to be able to give it that dimension, that grass-like texture. And I'm just holding my brush this way, straight, and just dabbing, just like this. I'm just going up and then down, spreading out some of the paint that I may have got on there and heavier in air, other areas. And then as we go back, we don't want our strokes to be quite as large. So I'm using more of just the tip, holding my brush up a little bit more. And that allows me to use the tip instead of the side. Get some more water, make sure your brush is damp. If you start getting areas like this area here where the paint uh, has a rougher texture, if you want more coverage, you need to add a little bit more water to that. Going back to my palette, adding in different colors, different shades, hues. There are so many different colors going on on the foliage in this photo. So I just want to make sure I'm able to capture some of that dimension. I'm not looking to make it the exact color. Otherwise, every time I would go back to my palette, I would need to check with my reference photo. And really, I'm just kind of adding in what I think would look good. Use your artistic license whenever you can. If it's a commission painting and somebody is wanting it replicated, then I would suggest taking your time and matching the colors exactly or as close as you can. I do see a little bit of green. So I'm going to add just a little bit. Let's see what kind of green we get with cadmium yellow and black. And I think that will work. Gives you more of an army green, a natural looking green. Just going to add in a little bit. Back here I do see bush too. Let's see. I don't want to overpower it with the green.
Okay, so let's work, as that dries, let's work back here again. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna clean out my brush really well. And it's probably time to spray the palette again. I don't want a lot of water. I don't want all my paint to run. I am working it on an, at an angle for viewing purposes. But generally, I don't. I have my palette flat. So let's try adding some of this in. This may be too vibrant. Let's see. We'll just add in just a little bit of this color back in here. Okay, so let's grab some Naples yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit of highlight to here so that I can glaze over the top of that. I'm going to take some of this violet color tone it down with just a little bit of the raw umber I'm going to add some of that back in here On camera that shows up really bright it actually is not um, it is actually fairly dark viewing it in person so don't make yours as as you see it on camera don't make it as bright as what you see it you're gonna want that more toned down mine matches pretty well to the picture Add in a little raw umber, maybe a little phthalo blue. don't want really harsh lines back here because it is so far away you're not going to see a lot of the harsh lines so if you get one that's maybe a little too harsh or distinctive a line you just take your finger and dab
make a nice dark, deep color. Add some phthalo blue to that just to make it on the cooler side. And then this area here is actually really pretty dark. Just want to make sure my values are correct. The color doesn't matter as much. You do just want to make sure your values are correct. And you could paint the same scene in, you know, brighter colors or, I mean, any color really. You could change the colors completely, but it will look like a different photo if um, your values are incorrect. values are just pretty much how light and dark something is. Things that are farther away are going to be on the lighter side and things that are closer are going to be darker. Okay. Okay. I think I'm happy with the background so far. We'll see. Um, let's go ahead and work on this tree that we have that we covered up quite a bit of it, which is fine. But I wanted to make sure I got the location in where I wanted it. So I'm just mi mixing up a dark color. And towards the center area here, where the branches kind of jumble up it's going to be quite a bit darker and then as you work your way to the side here it gets lighter so i'm going to start with the darker i'm going to kind of feather that in this is his ear hair that's really bright so i want to feather that in i don't want a halo straight line effect that to stand out a little bit from the background so I'm going to add in a little bit more black to that so it doesn't blend in with the background too much
Okay, so we can add a highlight to that. I'm going to rinse my brush. And time to spray the palette. I'm just being really selective on where I want this. Paying attention to my reference photo. I don't need to worry about too much of this because we are going to do the sky up top and it's going to cover that quite a bit. But as long as my values are there, I can go ahead and put those in again. Okay, so I'm going to stop there before I add any more highlights because I want to get the, the color of the sky in first. Um, so I'm just going to take this round brush here. It's just an Artist Loft brush. Um, it's a very old brush and kind of fluffy on the end. Uh, I don't know what size it is. Any brush will do. I think I'm going to like the rounded edge better for the sky to give it a softer glow to it. So let me go ahead and wet the brush. Wipe off any extra moisture and let's mix our color. It's a very pale color. So we're going to take some titanium white. Um, let's try just a tad of the cadmium yellow. I just want to tint this white. Just so it's not a pure white. I'm going to test that and see if well, we could tint it even a little bit more. Let's take some Naples yellow. It's going to dry a little bit darker, so I want to make sure I account for that when I'm testing. And that looks that looks a lot better. So let's start up here. May have to do a couple coats of this. And I may even end up toning it. I'm just going to fill this all in right now. 
and then I'm probably just going to go through and tone. all the way in around the ear. I'm going right over that tree that I did. That's why I didn't touch too much. I'll worry about the highlight on that area because I knew I was going to go over it. Finishing with some horizontal strokes. And that just kind of sets the sky down. Okay, so we can let that dry for the moment and then we can kind of glaze over some of that. Again, on camera, I'm in the midst of getting a different camera, but um, on camera, it's showing up more of a violet tone and it is not. It is actually more of a yellow tone, but for some reason my camera wants to pick up a violet tone. So if anybody knows how to fix that, let me know. I'm still learning the whole logistics of camera and video making. But I think to fix it, I think I need to get a better camera to start. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start working on this area again. We can just start taking, let's take some of this <clears throat> burnt umber. Pretty much just kind of creating a wash with it or a glaze if you want to call it. Just want to get some more colors on this canvas. And you can go back to the brush we were using before. I'm just going to stick with this one. It gives it just a little bit of a different texture. We're going to do this area pretty dark, so let's take some raw umber, some black, um, a little bit of phthalo blue, just a little bit. We're just going to fill in some of the dark areas that I see, and then we'll go back through with some highlights again. I don't want to lose my sketch, so I carefully go around that area and then just kind of blend it in. And 
there's a lot of water in my brush, which is fine because I'm going to put more uh, paint over the top of that. I'm just going to drag this darker color back in, let it fade off as it goes. That way it doesn't look as if it's dark here, mid-tone, light. You want it to all kind of blend and, and be a gradual thing. So I do see some of this uh, blue-violet here. I'm going to just add a little bit of that. Maybe more. I'm not rinsing my brush in between, just letting it mix with the color I just used. These look like maybe rocks or dirt. So I'm just going to fill in some areas, all different kinds of brush strokes. back to the dark.
I'm just going to continue to go back and forth and refine those darker areas. And then that will complete the base so that we can start adding, building up the detail. Okay, so I'm happy with the base on that. Let's see if that's dry. Uh, we'll give it just a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go back to the number 10 round brush that we were using to start with. And I can start adding in a little bit more detail, start up, amping up the contrast. So let's take some, let's see, we got six. Um, let's take some Naples yellow and some unbleached titanium white. We'll just start adding in a little extra highlight on some areas. in a little bit more dark this area back here it looks it's a little more straight than what I have on my canvas so I'm gonna fix that uh, let's just take some dark and take some umber just a dark color Filling in spots of the canvas that I see need some extra paint that I may have missed. And back in here, we need to do a shadow for the tree. The cows look like they're covering most of it, the ones that I opted to leave out. So I'm going to go ahead and put a shadow in there. Let's grab some of this purple, blue violet. We'll gray that down.
bit more of that in here towards the rock area. Most of the paint is off of my brush now, so I'm just going to add a little bit back in this area. Let's go back to our highlight. Let's take some Naples yellow and spray my palette again. Let's take some of this bronze. Continue adding in all these different textures. Back in this area is pretty blurry. It's not in focus very well. Mainly the cow is what's in focus, so I'm not going to worry about doing super fine details back here. But I do want it to still give it that illusion of realism. As you get closer to the foreground, your strokes are going to get uh, longer. Whereas back here, we're using just little tapping motions. Towards here, we want to create more uh, stem-like structures. So we're going to make our motion a little longer. I can see in the pictures there's just some grass, the heads of the grass that are kind of shining in the light. So I'm just going to add some of those. They're pretty out of focus, so I don't need to worry too much about making them perfect. They're, I don't want them to be the focal point.
as you get closer to the foreground, they become a little bit more in focus. So you want to pay just a little bit more attention to where you're putting them. Now I can start creating some of the grass-like textures in here and I'm going up and then back and forth, just really sporadic, I'm not trying to put them in the exact spot, just the general area to give it the illusion that there is some grass growing here, some wild grass-like textures in there. You could do this with a liner brush, which I might in the very foreground, but I don't want it to be too in focus. I want the primary focus to be the cow, so I need to keep that in mind. Just lots of different sporadic shapes and textures, vary your colors. If it gets too bright in one area, go back in and put your darker colors in to give it that contrast.
So now I can add some highlight to the rocks here. I'll just take some of that violet color, or some of the blue violet, I mean. Add a little white to that. And then just kind of create some flatter shapes. And take your finger and smudge it out a little. The rocks down here are primarily in shadow or the sand or whatever it is. Primarily in shadow, so you don't want a warm highlight on it. You want to keep it cool, which is why we're using the blue violet, which is one of my favorite colors to use for shadow highlights. Or even for reflective lighting. And I even see some magenta, so let's let me get some magenta. So I have Codenacodrome magenta. I can add a little bit of that to our palette. Don't need a lot. And this color we'll just use really sparingly. It's a vibrant color. We're going to mix it with our blue violet. Just being selective on where I want to see this color. Most of it has run out of the brush, so as I'm running out, I'm just glazing over some areas that maybe need a different tone to them. Let's pick up some more dark. Add in some of our shadows in here. Paying more attention to where the clumps of grass are and adding the shadows in towards the bottom.
Okay, so let's try a different brush. Um, I think I'm going to use this number one liner brush to give me some more detail. With liner brushes, you want quite a bit of water. So let's go, let's grab some Naples yellow. I think I might just use that straight, we'll see. And this is where we're going to add in more detail. I'm just adding in all those little bright pieces of grass that I see in the background. Just emphasizing some of those. I don't want a ton of detail. So avoid being too structured with it. Just be very loose with it in the background area. Towards the front here, we can start adding in some more just distinct grass. Just a few. We don't want to put all of them in focus. So we're going to do just a few. I'm just adding in some brighter highlights. What I'm doing is just kind of flicking the canvas. If you can hear that noise, that's my dog. He's having a, a dog mirror.
just adding in a lot of different action pieces going on in the foliage here. Nothing structured, just kind of want the randomness look to it. And the foliage, we can always come back to and add more detail. And you could really detail this out. But I think once I get the cow in, I'll know more of what I want to do. But I think I want it to be more of a blurrier background, not too detailed. I'm going to go back to my number 10 round. And add in just a little bit more highlight in here. Just being selective with it. I think I'm happy with that for now. So now that the background is dry, let's glaze over. We can glaze over some color. I think I'm going to do some Naples yellow. And I don't want a lot of this in my brush, so I'm wiping primarily most of it off. Uh, let's see. And I'm just going to scrub this color in. Okay. 
I'm going to switch brushes to the larger round brush that I had previously. Just make sure we use some darker colors on that one. So just make sure it's cleaned out good. Pick up some more of that color. I'm wiping the excess off on a paper towel. Just picking up a small amount at a time. This area in the center is a little bit brighter of an area. So I think what I'm going to do is actually add some white to what's on my brush. And then I will glaze over this area once this is dry. Okay, I'm going to rinse that white out. Go back to my Naples yellow. I'm take Naples yellow and start working on the sun rays that I see. Make sure you have some water in your brush. See, we can add a little bit actually of magenta to that. Just a very small amount. Wipe it out of the brush. And there's <clears throat> barely any on my brush. Most of it is just color residue.
and just keep working at it until you get it to where you want. Okay, so that's, I wanna let that dry and then I can go over and add a little bit more once I get this colorized. I'm gonna try adding some cad yellow. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and then we'll get back to that. Okay, so I tried to play around with the settings on my computer to try to adjust it to more of what I am seeing. Um, and this is probably the close, closest that I can get it. Um, hopefully that helps. Sorry, I didn't figure that out in the beginning. I'm still learning. So bear with me, it will get better. Um, so let's go ahead and start working on that tree in the back. And then we can finish off that tree and finish off the sun rays. And then we'll be all set for today. And then we will work on this next. So let's take a darker color, add some of that dark back in. Let me spray my palette again. So let's start adding in some more depth to this tree here, following similar stuff to what I already have down there. Tell I have too much water on my brush, so I'm gonna dab some of that off. Just doing little dab motions just to give the illusion of some trees or some leaves, sorry. Thank you. 
And then as we come farther down and towards the center, it becomes darker. Now we can add a little bit of a highlight. Um, this is almost like a reflective light down here on the trunk. So let's take some of that violet, just mix it kind of with the color that we already have on the brush. Just kind of tones it down a little bit. And we don't want a lot of this. We're just going to drop a little bit of that in. Let's add a little bit of the burnt umber to that. Okay, so we're almost finished. Now that I added that trunk, I need to go over some of the center areas. Some of the leaves in the center. I want to be able to see the trunk through it just a little bit, but not all the way.
Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So we'll go ahead and call that good for today. Um, once this dries tomorrow, we'll go ahead and maybe touch up some of our sun rays here. Um, and then we can start on the cow tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, share, comment. Um, I will answer any questions that you may have. Um, if you go ahead and put them in the comment section, uh, I can answer them on tomorrow's video. If, uh, if you have any suggestions as to how to make this video better, please let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm still learning, so please, I take um, all criticism. Uh, whether you like this video or not, I would love to hear and get some feedback. I appreciate you all tuning in, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you.